2008 BMW 335i rear brake pads and rotor replacement. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you through the steps of replacing so you can go ahead and get your vehicle racked up. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and go ahead and remove your rear wheels. Okay, now that we got the wheels off, we need to get these clips off. And the way you do it, you put one thumb here and one thumb here and you can push in and rotate out. Or you can get a flat blade screwdriver and put it in here and wedge it over and then rotate it out. So one of the first things I'm gonna do after getting that clip off is remove the brake wear indicator sensor. And we're gonna take a 10 millimeter bolt right next, right above the spring here. We're gonna remove the 10 millimeter bolt here. And then there's gonna be a, uh, an eight millimeter, sc millimeter screw here that we're gonna take out and then we're gonna peel the uh, inner fender lining. Bolt it, you'll just peel it back like this. And then every couple of inches, there's these little catches. You're gonna pop these little doors open with a little flat blade screwdriver. So you're gonna pop the little, the little connector open here. Pop the wire out. Here to the uh, behind the spring, right behind the spring is going to be another one. You pop the door open with a little flat blade screwdriver, and then right here to the left of the spring, pop the door open and do it with the screwdriver, and then you'll pull the wire through. Pull your wire through, and then the the white connector, you'll pop it out and just squeeze it. So then you'll just squeeze the tab and pull and separate. Okay, now that the lining sensor is uh, unplugged, on the back of the caliper here, there's gonna be a, uh, a little plastic plug like this. You're gonna pop it out, and then on the, on the bottom of the caliper, there's another plastic plug here. You're gonna pop that out. And then so, inside this little uh, rubber boot that we pop the caps off, there's gonna be a seven millimeter Allen socket in there. So you unscrew the seven millimeter Allen socket. Our Allen bolt. So you'll do the top one and the bottom. So after loosening up the uh, the caliper bolts, you're just going to slide the pins out like this, top and bottom. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lower the vehicle down and remove a couple ounces of brake fluid from the car. And the reason why is we're going to push this piston back into the bore, but we're not going to open the bleeder screw. And what that's going to do is push the brake fluid back up the line and back into the master cylinder. If it's if it's full, it'll overflow and spill into the engine bay. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna suck out maybe two ounces, three ounces. So we're gonna suck a little fluid out of the master cylinder. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna pop this little cover over here on the driver's side, pop this cover off, remove the cap, and then you'll use like a turkey baster and suck about two or three ounces out. So after sucking out a couple ounces, we're gonna take a flat bed screwdriver for right now. And we're gonna put it here in the caliper and just give it a little pry. And the reason why is that they, they build these little lips up and you won't be able to get the, the caliper off unless you pry the, the, the piston back in a little bit. So we're gonna pry, put it in here, wedge it in here like this and just give it a little pry. And then once you get a little bit of the piston going in, you can pry the caliper get off. Get the caliper off. I just rest it on top of the uh, lower control arm there and let it hang and let it sit there. Get this bracket off. To do, that, to do that, we need to go on the back side of the bracket and remove the 16 millimeter bolt here in here get those bolts off the back I'm gonna use my um, my mountain my wrenches they're made by mountain they're a combination 18 16 or or 18 16 combination wrench uh, with flex head and they they're ratcheting wrenches and they're about three and a half feet long or so three feet long they're they're awesome for doing these type of work so if you uh, if you've never seen these before I'll put a link in the description for them and uh, I recommend you pick a setup or I'm just gonna remove the uh, the two bolts and then take this bracket off now that we got the bracket off we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, the set screw here on the rotor the six millimeter allen bolt so you remove that and then you're going to slide the rotor off and make sure your e-brake is not if on your rotor is uh kind of stuck on or in here to the uh, hub here since we're uh, not reusing these rotors you can take a hammer like this and you can strike it on the face of the uh, rotor now that we got our rotor off um, we need to take our piston here and push it back into the bore of the caliper. And the way I'm gonna do that is, uh, well, you can do it a couple ways. You can use a C-clamp and uh, put the C-clamp on and screw it in and it'll, it'll put the piston back in. Or you can use a large pair of channel locks. Or in my case, I have a tool that's designed to, to put them back in. So you, it's like a kind of like a cocking gun. You put it on there and you just squeeze the trigger and it pushes the piston back in. So you're gonna push it all the way in until it uh, bottoms out. And like I said before, we're not gonna open the bleeder screws or anything. We're gonna right, remove your old uh, brake pad. Uh, set the caliper back up on the uh, control arm for now and we're going to reinstall our new so rotor. I'm going to be installing these Brimbo ro rotors 
And here is the part numbers for you guys if you want to pick these up for yourself. I will also leave a link in the description for these uh, parts that I use in the video and also for the tools. So if you need to pick up any of this stuff, you just click on the links in the description. It'll take you right to the website and, and you can pick them so up. After unboxing your rotors, you may want to give them a wash. They Sometimes they come with a little oil on them to help prevent them from rusting and shipping and storage. So um, give them a wash with either soap and water or, or reinstall these back onto the hub here. And the park brake shoes rest on the inside of the rotors here. Yeah. So we're going to put the rotor on over the hub. And if you, and we're going to turn it left or right. And we're going to, we want to feel these shoes, brake shoes here, uh, lightly drag the inside of the, of the rotor. And if it, or... If it doesn't, then what we need to do is adjust this little star wheel here. So you'll slide, you'll take the rotor off, adjust it one or two clicks, put it back on, and check the adjustment. If it's too loose, adjust it some more. You, um, and keep going until you have a, a, a slight drag on the rotor. So I put my rotor on. As you can see, it, it turns very freely so that the uh, park brake needs a little bit Inside of adjustment. Inside the box, it should be a new uh, set screw. If not, you could reuse the old set screw. So now I have my rotor realigned. I'm going to go ahead and in install the screw after adjusting the brake and tighten now it. The now. brake rotor's back on. We need to prep our bracket here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a wire brush like this and wire brush the channels. And if there's rust or pits on this, then you, I would recommend you replace the bracket. But if it's in good shape, you just, uh, you just clean it Cleaning out. Cleaning the bracket bit. out. We're going to reinstall it. We're going to put a little blue thread locker on the threads of the bolts. And this, this is like a little glue to help prevent the bolts from loosening back up and vibrating back off. Uh, Permanex is the brand we use at, here at the shop. Um, I'll put a link in the description for this also. So we're going to put this back on the, uh, on the, over the rotor and, and bolt it up. And we're going to torque these bolts down to 47 foot-pounds. So now we're going to take the two pins that went through the calipers. And we're going to wipe off all the old grease and dirt off of it with a rag. Maybe some parts cleaner, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of uh, special grease here, designed just for uh, brakes. It's called Seal Glide, and uh, we're going to put a little bit, of, a little dab of this on the uh, on the bolts here, and, and and get it nice and lubed up, but not on the threads, just on the uh, on the sleeve part here. And then what we're going to do after they're all cleaned up and they're all lubed up, then what we're going to do is we're going to put them back in the calipers. And we're going to work them back and forth and get that grease inside the inside the uh, inside the uh, boot here, and we'll do that for both top and bottom. Now I'm going to once they're all lubed up, I slid them through where they're poking it through like this. And I'm going to put a few dabs of that blue thread locker on the on these bolts, like that, and then I'll push them back in like this. Now we're going to prep our new replacement brake pads. I'll leave a link in the description for these pa uh, parts. Things I like to do. Just take a little bit of that seal glide brake uh, grease and put a little bit on the back of the uh, shims on both inner and outer pad and that helps reduce squeaks. So I'll put a thin layer on there and you want to be careful not to get it on the uh, surface of the brake pad just on the back of the shim. So now you can take the outer pad and put it on just slide it onto the bracket and the inner pad you're going to line up the tabs inside the pistons here and just push so now it. Now we can take our caliper and slide it back over the, uh, the, sh the pads and the. Uh, and you also want to make sure that these pins are pushed back. So now yeah, that one's sticking out right there. So you want to make sure they're pushed back before you put them in. So you slide them on. Now you're going to push the pin in all the way. You seat them and then go ahead and start the bolts or, or tighten them up. And you're going to torque them down to 25 foot-pounds, top and bottom. Okay, after you got the caliper bolts tight, you're going to take the little plastic caps and go ahead and put them back on, top and bottom. Now that the caps are back on, we need to put this little bracket back on. And the way you're going to do that is you're going to line the little ears up on top and on bottom right there. And once you get them lined up, you just push and rotate it inwards like that. And then you will give it a little tug like that to make sure it doesn't pop back now off. Now we need to install our pad wear sensor. So it comes over the back of the uh, the back of the uh, caliper like this. It's going to slide on there, and you just push until it seats into place, like so. Now you're just going to round it back through there the way it came out, and then right here on the caliper here, you're going to put the wire over, and you can put the little plug that goes over the bleeder screw that holds the wire the, the wire there. So after you get it mounted through here. You're gonna pull it up, and it has these little little uh, spots that are kind of bare like this, and they mount inside these little 
spots where you unclip them. So you'll, you'll put them in there and you'll clip the door shut. It's gonna route around under the control arm on the bottom here. And it's gonna route in, in around the back side of the spring and come from the back side. And so every time you get, come to one of these little catches, make sure you, you hook it in there and close the door, lock it into place. And now you're gonna pull your fender lining right. back like this. You're gonna swing the connector up and it has a, they only line up in a certain way. So you line them up and then you just you got reconnect it. You can go ahead and put it back into a little carrier here and, and lock it into place. And you wanna make sure that the uh, bottom one lines up with the little slot here. Then you'll re reposition your finger lining back on and put your screw here and your screw that you took off under here. So once you get the fender liner, uh, Resecured, you're going to duplicate the exact same process on the opposite side. The only difference is this is not going to have a pad wear uh, sensor on it. Only one side of the vehicle has the sensor. After that, you're going to install your wheels, lower your vehicle down, and you're going to pump your brake pedal six, seven times. And what that's going to do is pump all the brake fluid black back into the master cylinder, and you should have a nice firm pedal. If for some reason you don't have a nice per firm pedal, then I recommend you bleed the rear brakes. But um, you shouldn't have any problems. You should just be able to pump it up and have a nice firm pedal, top off your master cylinder, and uh, that will complete the job of replacing the brake pads and rotors and sensors on a 2008 BMW 335i. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And also remember that I will be linking up all the parts and tools that I used in this video in the description. Thank you again for watching.